this is Ivan Novik from the Green Plum product management team at Pivotal. And today I'm here to announce the release of Pivotal Green Plum version 4.3.10.0, which is a huge milestone for us. First of all, it's release number 10 in the 4.3 series, which we are really proud of. It's rock solid. And with this 4.3.10 release, we're now introducing writable S3 external tables. So previously we had introduced readable S3 external tables. We now have the ability to both read and write from S3 as an external data source to Greenplum. And we'll do a little, a little demo of that later in this recording. And then as well in 4.3.10, uh, we have about eight plus improvements to the GP Orca optimizer, the query optimizer. The highlight would be improved performance of many table joins. So if you're putting together a, a join with 10 or 20 or 50 tables and you notice that you want it to go faster, well, it's now faster. Um, in addition to that, we're now supporting Veritas Net Backup version 7.6. So 7.6 is a newer version of Veritas Net Backup, which we integrate with and, and is now supported, as well as in the backup utility, we're now supporting schema level restore. So this is the second iteration on that feature. And now we um, we have really the full scope of what customers are looking for, which is restoring a specific schema and all the uh, objects associated with that schema. So really proud of the engineering team and happy to give to our customers the best release of Pivotal Green Plum ever, version 4.3.10. All right, I'm going to demo the S3 external tables in Green Plum database now. So here you can see I have an empty S3 bucket called Ivan Pivotal Bucket. And I'm going to come to my terminal. Here I've got a GPDB instance running. And this is running version Green Plum 4.3.10, as you can see. I'll just make the screen a little bit bigger. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run the setup SQL. So this is in the official documentation on gpdb.docs.pivotal.io. Um, but this is the setup in order to install the S3 protocol. So let's do that. Very good. And now I'm going to do a little demo. So for the demo, first of all, when you're using S3 external tables, we have a utility called GP Check Cloud. And this is really useful for configuration setup of your S3 connection. So if you run GP Check Cloud minus T, it'll create a template file. You go ahead and replace the secret key and the access ID, and this will allow you to be configured to connect to your bucket. So I've already done that part, and I've created a file called mytestS3.config, which is right here. I'm not going to cat con show you the contents because it has my secret key in it. But um, you go ahead and configure yours, and then you can put it in all of the segment directories. So we've got a S3 location and then S3.conf. We have the same thing in all the segments. So you can use GPSCP, copy the config to all those locations. After that, we'll continue with the demo. You've got your config. You can now verify your config. So this GP Check Cloud minus C using the config and referencing your bucket and your endpoint will allow you to test to see if you have connectivity or not. In this case, it's working well. Your configuration works well, so everything is fine. If it wasn't working well, and believe me, this utility was useful for me before when I was first setting this up because I'm running on a virtual machine, this demo is actually running locally on my MacBook Air in the office. and. Greenplum is running in the virtual machine, but we're connecting to S3 in the cloud. And initially, my VM had the wrong timestamp, and the GP Check Cloud would tell me, OK, I'll show it to you. Let's see. SU, um, sudo SU. Um, so we will change the date to be the 10th of October. 21st at uh, 1500 and then I'll run the GP check cloud and you can see it gives an error saying that you can't connect to S3 because of the 
um, SSL is is invalid. So let's go back. The current oops the current time in East Coast is East Coast US. So it is now October twenty first at uh, let's see eighteen twenty. So now the GP check cloud. Configuration works well. Very good. Moving on with the demo, uh, we're going to try and do a test upload. So let's do a test upload. As you can see here, there's nothing in the bucket. So let's do a test upload. And eventually, consistently, you'll have data. We can now try a test download. So it's going to download the information from the bucket and print it to the screen. So this information was in the um, in the file that I had uploaded. You can see right here I've got that file foo, and it was uploaded to S3 and downloaded to S3. What we'll do now is we'll log into the database. Again, we have version 4.3.10 or higher. And then what we'll do is I'll show you that we have a sensors table with rows in the data. We've got 2 million rows in the database. And so we're going to create the writable external table and the readable external tables. OK, and if you see the syntax, we're saying create writable external table like the sensors table with this location. It's the endpoint and the bucket and the prefix. And it's a CSV formatted data. And then the same for a readable external table. So now I can do something simplistic. I can say insert into um, insert into sensors readable external table values seven ninety nine nine two point one. So that will load some data. And then as well, I can do something more complex like insert into here, select star from the local table. Now that's 2 million rows that have to go from my laptop up to S3. So that takes a second. And then we can say select count star from this table. But that won't work because that's the writable table. So you've got to actually do it from the readable external table. And that works. That's the rows the 2097155 plus the one row I entered manually. You can also say select star from the readable table, let's say limit five. So we get five rows out. We can also say um, select uh, distinct timestamp, right? And we can do some processing on all the data in the table. So you can run any sort of complex query, and the only thing that's replaced is the lower level of the lower level of the query plan, which is the scan. So the scan is done through an external table scan from S3, but the rest of the entire query, all the complex logic of joins or uh, Madlib or PL, all of that's done, or geospatial is all done in the normal GPDB query processing. So that's the demo. Thanks. Well, you've got this far in the video, and now you're probably wondering why you're seeing this expanse of, of scenery. Well, this is the open space from the top of the hill outside of the Pivotal office where a good chunk of Green Plum developers work. And I just wanted to show you some external scenes now that we have the wide expanse of external S3 data that can be queried with Green Plum. Here's some wide expanse of scenery in the external world that goes with this video. So hope you enjoy.